welcome to another live stream. Today is March 15, 2019, 11 a.m. Uh, PDT now. I guess it's not PSD. It went through the time zone. Uh, daylight savings time. Okay. And today's discussion, open discussion. And this is the main theme, but we can talk about anything uh, that people want to talk about. But I think we'll do one of these on a regular basis with this title. And uh, the title of this is Open Discussion on Relationships. The do's, <laughs> the immense kicks into the event. Uh, the do's and don'ts of human interaction. Okay, so open discussion on relationships, the do's and don'ts of human interaction. And uh, let me do this. And basically what I wrote down as the description for this stream is uh, one of the main issues that we face in our society is how we interact with others. We are constantly being bombarded with the do's and don'ts of human interaction. I personally consider much of what has what have become societal norms to be manipulation, part of the grand strategy of capital to divide and conquer for the purpose of accumulating more capital. In this live stream, an open discussion on relationships, the do's and don'ts of human interaction. And in the previous sentence, when I say part of the grand strategy of capital to divide and conquer for the purpose of accumulating more capital. Capital, the first time it appears in here, is referring to Jonathan Nitzan's basically thesis that uh, of differential accumulation and capital was power and whatnot. So it is basically systems that we are talking about or that I am referring to. Hey, Casey, how are you doing? Welcome to another live stream. Uh, Luke, hey, Chicho, hope you're well. Glad to finally catch one of these lives. Welcome, welcome to a stream, brother or sister, of course. Index, how's life? Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can pronounce your name, uh, Luca Belay. Belay. Now, if there's a break there somewhere, Luke, Luck, Laka, Laka Belly, Laka Belly. <laughs> Is this like Rockabilly? Laka Belly, Laka Belly, maybe Laka Belly. I'm not sure. Let me know how to pronounce that, please. If I'm <laughs> totally just destroying it. It's just Luca. Luca, awesome, awesome. Thanks, Luca. Thanks for correcting it. Uh, I have a hard time with names. Hard time with names. So that's what we did. Uh, uh, Belay is part of a rock climbing. My hobby. Ah, is it? Belay is part of rock climbing. What is Belay referred to? Comic book Jedi. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. This can be a. This stream is touch and go. It's, we can go seriously for this stream. Open discussion as always, in general. Hannah, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Uh, so for this discussion, open discussion, but there's a lot going on. Just woke up today with so much going on in the news, right? So we could go heavy, dark, light, uh, general, personal relationships. Uh, societal norms whatever you guys want okay or just talk about comic books <laughs> Sam hey friend how are you how are things doing good doing good Sam thank you very much I hope you're doing well I'm bored at work are you bored at work <laughs> what, are you, what are you working on Hannah? it requires a lot of trust Oh, hold on, I gotta read that one. Giving someone a belay means providing protection to the climber. Oh, feeding the rope out for them and stopping it if they fall. Oh, so they're the ones at the bottom where they put the rope around themselves and they're letting it go and you're coming down or going up, right? That, that's that's, that's uh, what it is, I think. I've seen uh, people rock climbing where I go cliff jumping for since I was like 13 years old 
there's a place I go cliff jumping. Uh, I've missed it for the last year and I only went once or twice the year before. But for the last, I don't know, since I was like 13, 14 years old, there's a place I go to. Uh, sometimes I skip a few years and then kick it back off. Sometimes I spend a whole summer there and people climb up while we, there isn't too many of us that jump, but I jump. Actually, there's a fair bit. There used to be more. But while we're jumping, there's people climbing. So super cool. Super cool. Why do you feel banning all guns would help keep them out of the hands of bad guys? I would love to hear uh, your opinion. I don't think banning all guns uh, is a solution, Hannah. I don't believe that. Um, I, I think... That's, it's a big issue, but uh, there's no way I believe that banning all guns will keep them out of the hands of bad guys. Uh, a lot of the bad guys actually have all the guns they want. Osh, Oshniap. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hey, Chicho. I appreciate your videos. They help me relax. Glad. Very happy very happy to uh, be making this content man. and uh, I'm glad you're enjoying them they're a pleasure to make really they making the videos relaxes me putting this content together sometimes it's a little touch and go for me sometimes I get very excited and sometimes during the editing process my adrenaline kicks off and uh, I have to do a lot of stuff and whatnot Sometimes there's a little nervousness when you release a video, right? <laughs> How is this video going to go along? <laughs> right? That I do too much? That I plan, try to incorporate too much in there? But it is amazing. It, it allows me, once I press a button and see it flow, for there is a nice, um, I guess, it, I don't know if it's adrenaline, there's a nice feeling that comes to me that allows me to relax for an extended period of time. Australia is a great example of this working. Casey, is Australia a great example? We just had an Aussie go to New Zealand and annihilate uh, countless families. So is Australia a good example? I don't know, man. I don't think so. Gentle chaos gaming, pet peeve, people who are antagonistic towards you under the guise of so-called honesty. Peak shit vibrate. Let me read that again. Pet peeve. People who are antagonistic towards you under the guise of so-called honesty. Yeah, yeah, there is that. What's the solution? Add more guns in the hands of the good people? Uh, I don't think that's the solution. Uh, I don't think there is the solution. I think economic, it, the, the solution, Hannah, is hardcore like really prohibition doesn't work uh, so that's my take and throughout history we've seen prohibition not working in many on many levels right uh, but the root cause of what we're seeing here let me show you what i'm reading okay i finished uh do i have it here sorry if i'm gonna go a little slow on this this is a very touchy subject so I, i'm like I finished uh, Nicholas Taleb's Skin in the Game, right? Nassim Nicholas Taleb's Skin in the Game. I'm just checking out some of the glossary and table of contents and referring back a little bit. Just do a little review. When I when I read something I something like this, I like to do a little review and we'll put out a video on this, right? Let me just catch up on a little bit of chat and I'll show you what I'm reading now, what I started. Hey Chicho, I love your videos. I took a media studio class a while back and because of your videos on uh, comic history i aced our unit on comic censorship and the comic awesome awesome glad to help man glad to help that's uh, i like hearing that stuff thank you for using uh, what i put out as a resource um, i try to do my best to have accurate information on what i'm, what I'm putting out so my apologies if i didn't get everything accurate, but I tried my best and thank you for using it as a resource. That's the biggest compliment. So one of the biggest compliments I can get. Uh, since we're talking about relationships, what's your opinion on love? Is it just a transient thing 
or can it be sustained for long relationships? It can be sustained, Luca, 100%. I believe it can be sustained. Uh, we all, unless you uh, you're mentally have, uh, unless there are some serious psychological, mental, emotional breakdowns, we all have uh, loving relationships that we have had for extended periods of time and I doubt very much that any of us here or only a, a minute, minute percentage of human beings will ever, ever depart this earth without having a loving relationship in their lives. May it be with another human being, may it be with their pets, may it be with a hobby, a book, a movie type of music, at their job, whatever it might be. So I believe loving relationships can be sustained throughout your whole existence okay there's no doubt about that yeah it's a great example uh, if you can expand on that luca we can go a little bit further are you meaning in an intimate relationship where people decide to bond together and experience this existence as a couple together and that takes a certain amount of navigating yeah, it's a great example. You can't re remove all guns ever, but the stats show how effective it's been at saving lives. Uh, Casey, uh, to a certain degree, but we have to be careful with analyzing data, right? All things are not equal uh, in all places, right? So, for example, uh, gun, there's a certain much harder control on guns in Canada than the United States. But Canada has, as a, as a, I don't wanna trash talk Canada, I don't wanna trash talk anybody, but Canada as a country, as an imperialist country to a certain degree, has spread a lot of death and destruction around the globe, right? So just because there's a pocket of violence decreasing, because of laws passed by centralized governments, we also have to look at what those centralized governments are doing as well, right? Look at Switzerland as a perfect example, right? Okay, Switzerland, you don't see too much of what we're seeing today, and we have seen throughout history in many countries, right? However, Switzerland is one of the greatest uh, perpetrators of violence around the globe because they have a serious weapons factory, uh, weapons industry and a banking industry both working together to distribute violence so um, um it's you we have to take everything into consideration we have to take everything into consideration hi chicho oh man what an awesome subject for discussion i'm thinking <laughs> you're on you're on that side brother i'm on this side <laughs> do you have a list of great books available okay I'm about to show you one okay let me show you let me read Hannah uh, uh, let me catch up with the text really fast and I'll show you the book prohibition didn't work with marijuana both uh, m medicinally and recreationally also alcohol didn't work you're right and many prohibitions haven't worked all right prohibitions on pornography haven't worked prohibitions on uh, like there's so much there's so much hello everyone hello taco uh, i was mainly referring to intimate relationship okay thanks Luca. We'll, we'll talk about that in my experience that initial feeling of love or infatuation goes away after a while maybe i'm just a bit cynical because i've just had my heart broken yeah and man having your heart broken what an amazing sensation it's brutal right really it's brutal it's it's like a psychedelic experience, right? If it's extremely heavy. And like all experiences, you have to take that and learn from it, grow from it, and then start looking back at it fondly uh, with the time you share. One thing I, 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 I always tell people that ask me, I'm not, I'm not an expert on relationships, intimate relationships, but my take is this. It's not about longevity, it's about intensity right what did you learn from each other how have you grown 
what are the bonds that you that that you grew with you right are you taking a lot of positive from that relationship and has it made you become a better human being um, yeah there are intimate relationships that are meant to last a very very long time and forever if you want to think about forever your time you're spending on this planet in this body or beyond we don't know right and there are certain experiences that are extremely intense that are very short now the trick to the whole thing is, in my experience is, putting things into context, right? I've met people that had a week long love affair when they were in their youth, late teens or early 20s, mainly in the teens, that are stuck, that are completely stuck in that relationship. And they compare every other relationship they get into to that one week or two weeks or one month that they had that were infatuated with another human being, that everything they ate, breathed, talked, thought was focused on them, right? That is a problem. That is an addiction, right? They're addicted to that single one experience. They, If they've reached that level where they're decade, two decades, three decades later, and I've met people like this, who are constantly relating everything back to that short period of time where that relationship was phenomenal then they have to seriously sit down and analyze their lives and try to figure out why it is that they consider that moment which was decades ago to be the ultimate pinnacle of love uh, intimate love that they will ever feel feel if they're doing that they're very short-sighted um, counseling I would recommend <laughs> okay or breaking uh, what did Robert Anton Wilson or Timothy Leary or many of the uh, Terrence McKenna or whatever experience you require to break that uh, I feel like uh, love with two humans in a commitment and respect for one another constant clear communication openness and clarity only strengthens a relationship in my experience yeah and love grows if you feed love it'll grow faster than weed <laughs> really people make the mistake of having love in their relationships and forgetting that they need to feed it to first of all keep it healthy and to allow it to grow right really but I think we're talking about individuals, everyday people, unless I am misunderstood. Um, da -da -da. Are we, Casey, are we talking about love or are we talking about gun violence? If we're talking about love, uh, individuals and collective work, if we're talking about guns, we are not an island. Each individual that commits horrendous crimes, mass, whatever it might be, did not come from an island there in Australia and New Zealand's case they did but they do not live alone right they are influenced there's a reason why they are doing what they are doing uh, and I doubt very much it's because of their own psyche uh, number of guns and gun violence barely has a correlation it's gun availability in, in crime written areas that do it most Western countries attempt to use punishment as a deterrent against crime when criminals begin to see life sentences death sentences and appropriate sacrifices for a heinous crime they want to commit it becomes an issue of ethics and morals rather than crime punishment and prohibition what a brilliant take you chose Luca I forget what I said but <laughs> thank you for that my pleasure Luca my pleasure relationships yes and that's because I've also had my heart broken for sure and it takes a long time to adjust and correct and then start looking back at it with fondness and going wow what a brilliant experience there are many people who, who have never had their heart broken those are the people that I wish the best for and I hope one day they have their heart broken it means they've loved that powerfully right how do you analyze in order to get a get unstuck 
in your opinion if you don't have the resources at your disposal for counseling um, reading reading is huge spending time by yourself do not being very careful game at home mom fantastic question by the way making sure you're aware of the traps set out there for you by certain institutions and systems to sucker you in to uh, to prey on you in your times of weakness so and those are the situations those are times where we're, where we're the weakest right but what we have to do is really slow down so game at home, home mom i'm not i'm not sure what comes first right for me what i've learned in my long goatee days is if i get into a situation where it is extremely traumatic touchy uh, requires quick thinking and stuff like this i do whatever it requires to be done speedy gonzalez style but then i do not continue i make sure i'm doing everything so i can slow things down so my first order of business when something like this happens heartbroken traumatic experience whatever it might be is to do what i need to do to stabilize the situation and i slow down so i can process the data coming in and sometimes that requires a few hours a few days a few weeks a few months to a few years okay personally um, and that to me slowing down time to a certain degree counseling i also uh, for me personally entheogens have been a huge part of my existence but that's because i've spent the time and i've read and researched and talked and it's like i educated myself in that field for decades now uh, so they are an ally that i ca uh, seek counseling from Eduardo would love this discussion right now. I think any thoughts on the social media impacting love relationships? Oh yeah, huge. Nowadays, chatting to people in public spaces is seen heavily as being creepy. Yet go back 20 years and it was the only way of meeting people. Yeah, I'm okay with chatting people in public. Uh, I realize sometimes it's touchy and people are listening, right? Because they're reading and they have their ears open they're listening they're not listening to other people they're really it's a different form of communication maybe um, that being said I think one of the reasons I think people are a little bit touchy as well is because of the totalitarian nature of our societies people are afraid which is what centralized power has decided to do I have been rejected many times by women girls in high school have joked about me gave me fake numbers and meet updates welcome to the welcome to the welcome to the group uh, brother uh, I have learned that women won't accept me and I have trust issues when the topics uh, the topics are relationships uh, the first part of you uh, has happened to me a lot really and you're not alone it happens to everyone so just because it's happening to you do not put yourself into a pocket and assume you're the only one that this is happening to or you're 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 unique within your surroundings right because if that's what you think then you haven't looked for, for uh, further enough to find people who are experiencing the same thing you are or have experienced the same thing you have right even within your circle there might be people who have experienced the same thing you have but they've experienced it in the past or maybe they haven't experienced that yet because they haven't put themselves out there like you have so they may be experiencing this in the future one of the tricks to managing everything is understanding the concept of time whatever you're experiencing at the moment is not the end all and be all of your complete existence it wasn't how you felt before this emotion took you took, took over you and trust me it is not how you're going to feel in the future in the near future even okay so put things into context take time into consideration and understand that we're here for a while right slow down take your time and maybe you just have to approach it differently maybe you're approaching the wrong people right i've done that in the past there's a certain type 
<laughs> period, a certain type that I was attracted to. That was my younger, foolish years, right? Because of programming, maybe societal programming, maybe me wanting to experience something or whatever it is, right? And there was a certain period that type was hard for me to interact with until I learned what that type was, right? And then I made a decision. Maybe I wanted to interact with it or maybe I didn't. Maybe I was delusional. Maybe I was programmed, right? So a lot of that had to do with me personally, not with the other, okay? So take your time, uh, Taco. Uh, it'll, it'll slow down. It'll work out, right? Read a lot. Here, let me show you. Dante, how are you doing? Talking about relationships. This is going to be a mess. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> Thanks, Dante. On that note. Okay. I mentioned, I'm just finishing off. I've finished uh, Skin in the Game by Nicholas Nassim Town. Now, this is a book I've had for 10, 15 years. Right? 10, 15 years. Right? And I read the preface on it 10 15 years ago and it was pretty heavy i took some notes right and uh it was very heavy so i didn't continue reading it i just started reading again i re i reread the preface again and took some more notes okay it took me a couple of days to reread the preface because i had to think about it right here's the book it's relevant to our time it's relevant for the discussion we're having right now it's just coincidence that this happened right Wilhelm Reich, The Mass Psychology of Fascism. Okay. Light reading. <laughs> okay. I just started this again. I reread the preface. Okay. So the preface is, I don't know, like it goes from six Roman numeral, numeral to 27 Roman numeral, right? And it's small text. It took me a couple of, page, couple of days to read it. Uh, um, apologies if I'm not reading comments right now. Let me, because I mentioned I was going to uh, mention this book, right? Now, I don't know how deep I'm going to go into this. Okay, I'm going to keep on reading. I am intrigued. I didn't understand everything I was reading in this 10, 15 years ago. I, under I understood, I related to and understood 99% of what I was reading, 95% of what I was reading, well, let's say 90% of what I was reading, I had to look up certain phrases and certain words because this is Wilhelm Reich, right? Uh, I had to do it for Nicholas Taleb's Skin in the Game as well, right? And by the way, Taco, this is uh, what I do to try to understand humanity and our society and my personal emotions and my relationships and whatever it is, I read. I listen to lectures, I listen to uh, audiobooks, I read entertainment, I interact with people, I go to places where I don't know anyone, and I sit down and I read my hands and this. I, I, go, I, go and I go into the city and walk around, and if I see a little coffee shop, I go sit down there if I've never been. It might be like on a, one of my walks, which is like two hours away from where I am or an hour away. And I sit down and I look at people, I observe interactions. Uh, and that makes me get out of my own head, right? Which is one thing we need to do, okay? Let me read you. <laughs> Syntax says, light reading my ass. By the way, let me show you this. Uh, crab apple liqueur. Fantastic. This crab apple liqueur is about five years old. Nicely aged. And let me show you what I got as snacks. The crab apples marinated, right, in the liqueur. I'll pop these one later after I do a little bit of reading. Okay. And tea. Let me read you paragraph or two from Wilhelm Reich's Mass Psychology of Fascism. Let me show you what the table of contents is, right? So, uh, 
preface to the third edition. So I won't, I'm here right now. Preface to the third edition. Right now, I've read that. Okay. Uh, hello, side 29. And hello to anyone else that showed up, haven't read the text. My apologies or any comments and stuff that was said. And I read that 10, 15 years ago, and I reread it again, and I took some notes. Right? Took a fair bit of notes. Okay. So the table of contents for this. Uh, ideology, so number one. I'm just going to read the chapter titles, and then there's subtitles as well. But ideology as a material force. The authoritarian ideology of the family in the mass psychology of fascism. The race theory, the symbolism of the swastika, the sex ec economic uh, presuppositions of the authoritarian family, organized mysticism as an international anti-sexual organization, sex economy in the fight against mysticism, some questions of sex politi political practice, the masses and the state, biosocial function of work, give responsibility to vitali vitality necessary, give responsibility to vi vitally necessary work. The biologic miscalculation in the human structure uh, struggle for freedom. Unnatural work democracy. Okay, those are the chapters. I realized that uh, in my country, the age people aren't read books, but you are reading books. Also, you are not young. I really like you. Thanks. <laughs> China, Obama. Take a look at this. Now, just on the preface here, just on the preface, right? I'm going to read you from, just read you from here. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you one sentence before, okay? And this comes into relationship. Uh, like, we're doing a live stream on relationships. This is basically on relationships. Basically, Wilhelm Reich's complete catalog is human interaction, relationships. Huge, huge, right? So, let me just read you this. And this is Wilhelm Reich breaking down some of his previous work that he's done. As I demonstrated it in my book, Character Analysis, and I'm quoting right now, okay. As I demonstrated in my book, Character Analysis, these layers of the character structure are deposits of social development which function autonomously, okay. Actually, let me read it from your beginning. You need the first sentence and stuff. Extensive and painstakingly therapeutic work on the human character has led me to the conclusion that, as a rule, we are dealing with three different layers of the biospheric structure in the evolution of human react reactions, right? The first sentence is talking about relationships. And according to Wilhelm Reich's work, and he was a physician, so, like, he's huge, right? He's basically broken down the human character into three layers, okay? Quote again, as I demonstrated in my book, character analysis, these layers of the character structure are deposits of social development which function autonomously. On the surface layer, layer one, right? So quote, on the surface layer of his personality, the average man is reserved, polite, compassionate, responsible, conscientious. Con conscientious. There would be no uh, social tragedy of the human animal if this surface layer of the personality were in direct contact with the deep natural core. This, unfortunately, is not the case. The surface layer of social cooperation is not in contact with the deep biological core of one's selfhood. It is born by a second, in an intermediate character layer which consists exclusively of cruel, sadistic, Levicious, uh, rapacious, <laughs> and envious impulses. It represents the Freudian unconscious, 
or what is repressed. To put it in the language of sex economy, it represents the sum of sum total of all so-called secondary drives. Look at this paragraph right here. You could teach a whole course on. Okay, brilliant, right? I didn't understand this 10, 15 years ago. Okay, I didn't fully understand it. I kept a book with me. You would have seen it here, right? I think I always had it here. It's something that I kept with me because I knew I was going to read it at some point and we're going to give it a shot right now, right? So basically, Wilhelm Reich is stating this, that every human being has three layers of psyche happening. On the surface layer, which is the polite, considerate, uh, interactive, communal, working with others and stuff like this, right? And then there's a deeper layer, and the deeper layer, da -da 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 -da, deeper layer he calls the biologic core. Uh, let me read you a couple more sentences in the next paragraph, right? If one penetrates through this destructive second layer, deeper into the biologic substratum of the human animal, one always discovers the third deepest layer, which we call the biologic core. In this core, under favorable social conditions, man is an essentially honest, industrious, cooperative, loving, and if motivated, rationally hating animal, right? So there is a surface layer, which is basically your social construct of how you're supposed to interact with your surroundings, your relationships, superficial. There's a deep layer, which is who we are as human beings, which is as he pointed out, constructive, creative to a certain degree. I wish he had added creative in there, and a cooperative, working with others. And if turns comes to shove, hating as well, right? As a self-preservation mechanism. And what he's stating in that first paragraph is the superficial layer, if, if, if it was only a superficial layer, then would be society would function very peaceably, right? It would function the way it was. It would be very shallow, of course, right? So there isn't that just that surface layer. There's a three layers, and there's a deeper down core layer, which is who we are as human beings, creative, compassionate, cooperative, loving, and protecting people. And in the middle, there's something which is fed, right? I'm using the word fed. I don't know. He didn't say it in here, right? Which is angry, disturbed violent and stuff like this. Our current political economic system feeds on that, in my opinion. I haven't gone deep enough for this, right? And basically, Wilhelm Reich in this book, he's talking about um, just relationships, right? To a certain degree, but he's focusing on fascism because this book was written in, the first print of it was written in 1936, I believe. Uh, the first edition was written in 1936, right? during the rise of fascism in Europe, okay? And um, I wrote down the date here anyway. In the mid-1930s, and the second edition was in the early 1940s after the, after the war, Second World War had ended, for the West anyway, right? So he grew up during a period where fascism was brewing, right? But he had the foresight, foreknowledge, to say that deep down within us, right, there's a tendency for fascism to exist. We just have to break through that thing because fascism comes through mass movements, right? In large part, both from the left and the right. He was banned from, he's, he's the only person that I know, Wilhelm Reich, is the only person that I know that both Nazi Germany and the US government have burned his books. Someone well worth reading, okay? So I'm only this deep into it and it's related to that. And I just want to read that for you guys. Uh, do treat partners as actual human beings with feelings and thoughts don't don't project your dream image of a partner onto them it's an unfair expectation 100 percent. and the key to that is empathy right we have to have empathy of other human beings of our surroundings of our communities right and that is one thing that empathy 
as on a superficial level, you know, politicians and corporations and educational system, all of these things say that you shouldn't be empathetic, right? Have empathy. But they don't feed that. If anything, they I don't know what the opposite of empathy is. Uh, but uh, deep down, they teach us to do everything other than empathy when they introduce competition. Okay. Although the book does deal with fascism explicitly, he uses fascism as a metaphor for domination of um, domination or person-to-person -person manipulation. Yeah. It, and reading the preface in the uh, by the way index has read Wilhelm Reich he wrote a paper relating Wilhelm Reich's stuff to music and stuff like this so he was he's well better versed in Wilhelm Reich than I am for sure and basically the statement here is mass psychology of fascism but the book is about relationships opposite of empathy is uh, sociopathy right is it I don't know um, psychopath sociopath i guess is a sociopath that has no feeling towards any other living creature narcissism i don't know uh, it has to be empathy is understanding relating to other people basically putting yourself in their shoes uh, on every level what's the opposite of that i don't know i don't know okay um so Super delicious. What are some of the comments that I miss? <laughs> How important do you consider time away from other people to be very, Haluka, very important. Very important. I like spending a lot of time solo just to filter the noise, right? Some people find people uh, energizing and say that time alone is bad whilst often feel like I need a break from other people. I'm with you, Luca. I need a break. I do get energized by interacting with people, but I need extended periods, downtime. Bill Hicks breaks for me. That's what I refer to them. Everyone is different. You shouldn't judge yourself against other people. Yeah. I think sociopaths are incapable and psychopaths don't care. Sociopaths are incapable and psychopaths don't care. So I guess the opposite of empathy would be both a sociopath and a psychopath merged together. Uh, empathy. Psychopath, they don't. Psychopath is an isn't acknowledged anymore it's not acknowledged anymore really i didn't know that what are your thoughts on friends with benefits okay with me as long as you're not uh it doesn't involve cheating uh if your partner knows about it that's fine but as long as you're not lying in your other relationships uh, that are important to you about it friends who are not long-term partners rather two people who are partners that don't want to commit to a relationship but want to explore their sexuality that's fine with me taco uh, the one problem the only problem i have with that is uh, people get addicted to that uh, to the physical and they don't explore the emotional to a certain degree right i've had friends that jump from partner to partner or, uh, friends that have are are longing for an intimate relationship with someone but because they require that physical, they constantly uh, hook up with friends that have benefits, right? So they're getting their intimacy fix for short term, right? And that's prohibiting them from putting themselves out there to find someone to interact with, um, to to connect with on a, on, on a more in-depth basis that they're looking for, right? I remember one time with a friend of mine that was we're talking about and this came up and I basically said listen think about it this way if you're always eating McDonald's you're never going to be hungry right and eating McDonald's for an extended period of time is going to kill you 
right? So you got to be hungry to seek something that you really want, right? So it's okay if you're starving, if you need it, to seek the physical, but don't just settle for that if you want more, okay? Sociopaths are more criminal, I think, more ASPD. My sister's, uh, my sisters, my girlfriend, any thoughts on that? Damn. Yeah, true. But I, for me, uh, I've had people, friends, both male and female and otherwise, that have friends with benefits. So I've never seen one type of person just look for friends with benefits. That occurs all over the place. If anything, I've seen more I've had more female friends that have friends with benefits than male friends. Maybe because the male friends have been looking for them, they haven't been able to find them. This has been easier for female friends to find them. I don't know. Damn, need to go to work. Hope to see the rest of you to, uh, on YouTube. Peace, peace, uh, peace, Luca. And by the way, Luca, this is not going to be loaded on YouTube. It'll be loaded on BitChute. Okay? Most of these live streams are not being unloaded on YouTube. They're being loaded on BitChute. And the reason being is because YouTube was killing certain channels when they were loading Twitch live streams to their YouTube channel. I don't know if it was they were only loading Twitch live streams or not. I don't know. But as soon as that type of stuff happening, and I'm, I'm only uploading either the cooking live streams to YouTube or some random ones. This one, I don't think we're going to upstream to YouTube. I don't believe so. It's, people can change my mind, maybe. I don't think he is, uh, Paco. I don't think he's troll, no. Friends with benefits often collapses when the balance of them caring shifts. Yeah, yeah. Technically eating anything for an extended period of time will kill you, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> if you had a lot of love in your life for an extended period of time, I think it'd be okay. Taste the rainbow. Would you consider uh, would you consider is a requirement to be happy with yourself before you search for a relationship um, it shouldn't limit you uh, if you're not happy with yourself or you're you're having them going through hard times or you need companionship or whatnot I don't think so because relationships are form of therapy form of bonding right and form of exploring your own personal being. Again, we don't live in an island, right? So I don't think you should wait until you're perfect before you try to be in an intimate relationship or in a relationship with friends with benefits or loving relationship or whatever relationship there is. Our lives are, are about growth, is about experience. Uh, and we're not flatlining. I've never met, maybe I've met one person that's a flatliner, right? Which is a robot. Uh, and that's probably because I didn't know what they did in there when the doors got closed, right? So they represent them, them, themselves as having one single emotion. Maybe that's who they were. But we all go through ups and downs. We all go through ups and downs. And you can't wait until you're up to try to find a relationship because Sometimes some of the most important relationships you might get into is when you're down. Okay. And Chicho, I'm growing a beard. Thanks to your inspiration. ASMR facial hair video. <laughs> nice. I gotta make more of those. I've just been in my goatee phase for a while. I'm, I'm enjoying this, right? So I change my facial hair uh, when I wanna, when I wanna, what do you call it? Uh, just have different look different different things so i got my beard uh transpirational from uh transpirational from search technology system of down nice inspiration man system of down he had a good beard for a while i don't like the thin look it's not my thing i like the large look <laughs> good luck with the beard Trimmed it to look like 
early 2000s rapper Drake. And it looks amazing. Thin to win. Thin to win. <laughs> early 2010. I gotta look that up. See what it looks like. There was a period where I had the goatee, like small goatee. The, it was just in, right? The short goatee that's just like no depth to it. Would you think that, think about the concept of falling out of love and what do you think you can do to counter it? Oh, I like the beard. I'm a follower of beard. Nice, that look. Uh, what can you do to counter falling out of love? Uh, you have to feed it. You have to spend time together. You have to, you have to, um, you have to grow. You have to listen. Um, but yeah, there are times where you just fall out of love, uh, or your love changes to a level where you may have respect for someone and want to be with them, but not uh, on an intimate level, right? It happens. It's happened with me. Uh, it's happened to people who have been with me, right? That goes both on an intimate level and on a just non-intimate level friendship, right? It's just something that happens. You can't keep all your relationships. You can't feed all your relationships. You can't, uh, you can't maintain all your relationships throughout your life. Otherwise, we'd be overwhelmed. We would have thousands of people we know and we have no time to think. You have to clean house every now and then to introduce new ways of being and people. Sometimes you have to reduce the amount of interaction you're having with others. Right? Uh, I have the mustache taken care of, but my beard needs to grow an inch longer and my beard is very nice. That said, I think you have to be careful. If you don't love yourself, it's easy to fall into the trap of cultivating a one-sided relationship. Well, agreed, 100% index. I should have added that clarifying in there too. Uh, where your partner is contributing more to the relationship to sustain you than vice versa. Yeah, or one of the worst case scenarios, you're both feeding on each other and it just spirals into just, just nastiness. And I've seen those types of relationships. Luckily, I've never been in that type of relationship. Um, not on an intimate level. When I was growing up, I had friends and stuff like this where you just don't mesh and you push each other to a level where it's just chaos, right? Um, but yeah, for sure, hopefully you're working towards uh, understanding yourself and who you are and how you want to interact with the world and deprogramming yourself, the cultural programming that's put into your brain and our psyche because we, we're all trying... Like our societies try to brainwash us, okay? Maybe on a government level, corporate level, friendship level, a peer level, family level, right? So we're, as we're growing up, we're constantly being bombarded with people who are telling us who we should be, how we should react, right? How we should interact, right? What we should think, what we shouldn't think, right? As we grow older, we should begin to realize some of that programming, what it is, and question that programming and grow, right? The grass is always greener on the watered side, unless it's flooded. I'm gonna sip Captain Morgan this weekend. I'm so ex <laughs> excited about my jug yesterday. Our matey. <laughs> The grass is so much greener on, on uh, my side where I can never love anyone and I just chose can't love man or woman, nothing. Oh, Ali. hopefully you have pets that you can love. Right? I hope you still care for people. Uh, blessed are those who, who, whose lives, who live lives of substance and meaning for they shall inherit their life lives tenfold and when they cross over the void and return to the gentle chaos of the center of the omniverse they they will willingly and truthfully choose life again okay gentle chaos came in. is that grant morrison <laughs> is, that, is that a grant morrison writing alan moore that sounds like a grant morrison writing or uh 
one of the sci-fis from Robert Anton Wilson or something, or some sci-fi, science fiction fantasy. All I see is people getting together and then after a while just uh, dumping dumping them and finding the next F buddy. Um, maybe, uh, Ali, maybe the, your surroundings, you need to change your surroundings. I know people, I have been in situations where that's what's happening, right? Uh, just, and that's, you know, if people want to do that, let them do that. Maybe they want to experience gentle chaos gaming. That's, that's you. Awesome. I like it. You should, you should start contributing some of that stuff uh, in print, either on a blog or start putting some uh, images, comic books together and tell a story based on that. Right. I like it. Gentle chaos gaming. But Ali, uh, everything is not doesn't stay stagnant systems stay stagnant and people come in and out of them right some people get stuck and they're stuck in a loop in that system right all we have to understand is everything in this society is a system right if we don't like a certain system move on right there are people interacting in other systems that we can find and appreciate four months ago i have uh adopted a puppy and uh, I needed someone to not be lonely. Do animal uh, companions help us through life like human companions or partners? 100%, 100% Taco. I fully believe that, right? I disagree with shutting yourself from all of humanity and just interacting with animals. Uh, that's my personal take. I'll, I don't think I'll ever do that, or maybe, but uh, our friends, other creatures definitely help us throughout this life and if you do only want to interact with them then do so right I just haven't seen it go well uh, too much right uh, I care for my friends I'll do anything for them family not so much I'll literally throw family under a bus for a free water bottle <laughs> oops <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that Ali really I'm sorry to hear that uh, but in large part, uh, biological families we are born into, right? But we can create a family that is not biological to us. And I have friends that I consider to be family, really, right? And I have family that I'm not very close with as well, right? That I would call my friends uh, in, in any situation. and. I wouldn't call certain family members no matter what the situation was right so um, you know and the percentages of how you know how many how much of this type you have how much of this type you have and how much intimate you have and stuff like this varies for each of us um, family isn't who you're related to family is who you choose yeah I agree cider 100% listen do you hear them drawing near in their search for the sinners <laughs> I as read the go back up and read gentle chaos gaming's comment okay blessed are those who live I'll read it for you blessed are those who who live lives of substance and meaning for they shall inherit their lives tenfold and when they cross over the void and return to the gentle chaos as the center of the omniverse they will willingly and truthfully choose life again. Love it. And I should know, I should, we should have known that was you saying a gentle chaos game because you have gentle chaos in the, in the statement, right? Family you're stuck with, friends you choose. Yeah. Hey, Chicho. Hello, Lord. How are you doing? How's life? Feeding on the power of our, uh, of our fear and the evil within us. In your opinion, with President Trump's economics, are we headed for another 2008 recession? Uh, it's going to be much different. Uh, the 2008, uh, it wasn't a recession, it was bank robbery. It was a scam in broad daylight without anyone being held accountable, with them actually being promoted to government position. What's going to happen in the next downturn, if you want to call it downturn? It's going to be, it's going to look different. 
it's going to be much severer. Is this due to the deregulation with high risk investments? Um, this is due to lack of accountability and indifference of societies, of our communities, the lack of empathy, right? And people being lied into having skin in their game, having a skin in the game of Wall Street, being told that Wall Street, the prosperity of Wall Street is their prosperity, right? People bought that BS, right? They took the pill. Now they got to wake up, right? Like C CDOs from 2008 Wall Street or will something else cause it, cause a bust. It might be a slow, slow destruction of the safety net in communities within our societies. Um, talking about family, uh, I believe family is who you choose in yours. My real father left me even before I was born. I decided to make a family of my own. Nice. 100%. Hannah, or are we headed for all-time high economic growth? Economic growth where? Right? I don't know. Economic growth where? And it depends on your definition of what Jesus is, by the way. Uh, economic growth where? Like, for example, just a Hannah, just to give you an example, right? People say, oh, housing market is double. Ooh, great. And you look at certain stock markets, look at Boeing. It went up tenfold in the last like 10 years or eight years or something like this, whatever it was. So that was tenfold. Wow. Right. Look at Amazon. It went up like 2,000 fold in the last whatever. Look at cryptocurrency. They went up. Look at certain other places. They've gone down. Right. So economic growth where? I don't consider GDP to be the indicator of the well-being of a society, if that's what we're talking about. I have joined your Discord. May I post pictures of my puppy? Oh, for sure for sure i don't know if we have a forum maybe uh we have the discord has is broken down into two parts one is serious the other one is not serious i forget what we called it um and or you can post it in general but i'm pretty sure there's a folder there uh that you can share pictures uh loved ones relation i don't know i can't remember all the different folders and if you don't find a good place that you're not getting uh just post a comment in general mentioning that hey can we create a folder for people to post pictures of their pets and whoop, uh, either me or one of the mods will create it and we'll start sharing pictures of pets and things we love maybe pictures of things and animals and people we love right without anybody doxing anyone of course right quotes from jeff wayne's war of the worlds Oh, you can read us quotes from there? Yeah, read us quotes from there, I guess. Society's growth, uh, uh, society's growth indifferent when crushed by the struggles of everyday life. Oh, God, those books. This man knows more than Wikipedia. No, I don't know, Ali. Uh, and then Wikipedia has, uh, I, I make, I, I can, I, I don't, I don't know more than what's posted on Wiki or even close to a fraction of what's posted on wiki but i can guarantee you i've got less errors in my understanding and knowledge of history economics and politics than wikipedia does wikipedia has a lot of errors and a lot of lies and a lot of controls put in there wikipedia should never be the end all and be all of any research right there's a lot of mistakes in wikipedia and a lot of lies that have been placed in wikipedia but i'm confused what will bust housing student loans oh housing is a bubble there, there's no question about that right uh, Wall Street may go up further because they might uh, privatize uh, Social Security and just scam even more the US dollar my take is probably it will go up because we're seeing collapse in different places um, so that's what I you know what I think for me Hannah uh, I can tell you that I see growth in what I do, right? Both in my my work here, in my wisdom, knowledge, in my health, in my relationships. So I see growth the way I've chosen to live my life, which is my first uh, advice regarding economics. Figure out where which systems you want to function in. Economic growth for whom, Dante says. I believe... Uh, 
wealth concentration in modern day USA or worse than pre-evolution France. I think it's worse than in any other time in history, in human recorded history in the last, let's say three, 5,000 years or whatever it is. We have had huge growth in the US, no? Nobody will ever be perfectly fair or have well-being economically. Um, but the growth that has happened has been from theft from everybody else, right? If you're having growth by depriving other people of the ability to grow for their well-being, if you're stealing, then that shouldn't be considered growth. That's theft, right? So the numbers may say growth, the uh, or the whatever the official numbers may say growth, but in reality it's theft. Okay. Hi, how to meet how to meet the girl, the girl or a girl? The girl would be uh, make sure you're the you're you're the best you can be. Treat others with respect, empathy, and figure out what type of humor humor you like humor is ridiculously important in relationships humor in my opinion is one of the most important traits for the well-being of a relationship of any type of relationship talk to her talk to her uh, and listen to her okay or him or the individual the chances of anything coming from Mars are a million to one, and yet they come. <laughs> yet they come, they do too. Talk about what? Talk about what maybe they want to talk about. Talk about the weather, talk about a movie. Join a club, uh, a book club, and meet with people either online or in person and talk about the book. Join a pool league and play pool. There are girls that play pool and there could be some fun conversations had while playing pool. Uh, install Tinder on your phone and swipe right on all of them. I don't I don't use Tinder but I have Tinder but I've heard the right left thing. Uh, yeah. It's not my thing, but if Ali thinks it might be a good idea I don't know might be a good idea but from one la last I heard Ali you mentioned oh no you said you had lots of good you had lots of good friends not uh, the other there's a C in this one I'm gonna eat the C too see the black guy what shall I say after hello Read a book, talk about the book, introduce yourself, find a girl who's into what you're, you're into hobbies, I mean. Everything of value to me was in London. My beloved Carrie, <laughs> this is a quote from Wolf, forget who you're reading. And then you won't be at a loss of what to talk about for, for a loss of a thought. Interesting, thought experiment. Jesus, Jesus was transgender. If Jesus was born from the Virgin Mary, she wouldn't have been able to pass down a Y chromosome to Jesus. Jesus would therefore have been born female. Cool. That's a good, interesting thought experiment. Here's another thought experiment. There's writings I've read that says Jesus was a cold word for magic mushrooms. <laughs> what does growth mean when, for instance, Flint still doesn't have clean water? But according to our economic system, people getting sick will mean growth for the economy because they need medicine, right? It's flawed. When record amount of people still are poor while working jobs, I'm confused on what theft is. Could you please clarify? Theft would be the equivalent of, uh, what's it called? Uh, regulatory capture where corporations pass the laws so they can ta get tax breaks for creating products right 
and those tax breaks or subsidies will only come to them because they are they are so large that they need the subsidies which is taxpayer money coming into them and what that does it takes away disruptive innovation corporations companies coming up with better ideas of doing things right that is theft that is theft by a corporation by regulatory capture passing laws to enslave the rest of the population right that is theft corporate theft okay hey you whispering intellectual <laughs> I book it book. Uh, Christianity one girl's going out on step what Christianity one girl's going out of step and lies that went out really out of line mm, I don't understand that I just died laughing when you read the swiping tinder comment. <laughs> I have friends but they are they uh, they all dating now and I'm single and I can't love people I've never feel like I want to be with anyone you don't have to be maybe it's a time just to chill by yourself and watch anime read books read ama amazing amazing poetry and then slowly figure out what you love and reach out and see who else loves what you love and see if you can find a community where you can share that love and maybe come across someone that you would love right My typing is retarded but really Christianity is about one girl cheating on a guy and the narrative getting oop, uh, oh okay cool that was uh, loud okay thanks for taking care of it and that was too slow and trying to approve that comment sorry I be I be book, Booker I be Booker uh, but index took care of it speedy Gonzalez what is your thought about sorry incidental enter what what is your oh is <laughs> your thoughts about corruption and money laundering uh, it's it's destroying our communities my advice with girls talk about your personal beliefs and interests find common ground focus on thoughts and ideas not sex looks agreed and one thing Ali uh, when it comes to talking with someone right one of the biggest concerns that people have right and s especially uh, women right now okay girls or whatever right uh, or people who have been burned in the past is safety right they don't when they some people when they meet someone new and most people you have a hard time trying to figure out who these people are so if you start opening yourself up to them and explaining to them who you are and your well intention and all this jazz then they're more likely to open up to you so you need to show people that you don't mean any malice you don't mean them any harm right you're just living your life and would like to have a conversation uh, have to go thanks Chicho. thanks guys thanks for popping by uh, games at home mom hope you have a fantastic day Thank you for clarifying, Chicho. My pleasure, Anna. I am still trying to figure out my own political opinions and trust. The autumn leaves lie undisturbed. Now you're not here. <laughs> Is it okay to date someone you don't love and will probably ne never will? Yeah, sure. Like, Is it okay to be with someone just because you don't want to be alone? Of course. Of course, Anna. I agree with that maybe that is exactly the way they feel as well right but if they feel that they love you truly love you and they want this love to grow and you're not there yet and you don't see yourself being there anytime soon then you should be honest with them and explain to them that you're not there yet or you don't you can't reciprocate that intense feeling are they okay with being with you right be honest right. what happens when banks don't get those tax breaks do we still have growth 
does money magically then go to poor areas like Flint? No, but what happens is those banks will stop funding corrupt corporations to come and wreak havoc, create sacrifice zones, right? What we have done with the banks is given them complete control of our societies. And the only thing that the banks care about is more money, more capital. And if an individual or a corporation comes in and says, hey, listen, I found a mountain of gold, right? It's over there. It's right on top of a watershed and it feeds water to 10 million people. And those 10 million people aren't allowing me to go in there to extract that gold because I'm going to destroy the water supply, right? And I need to bribe, fund uh, elections where I could put certain people in power in government well, they'll, when they'll write this off to me so I can go in there and get this gold out, okay? So can you give me $10 million to do this? And the bank will say, well, what's our return? How much money do you have? Do you have assets? To say, yeah, man, I've already done this like 10 times in the past. I'm worth $100 million or $2 billion. I have assets. I can do it. I got track record. The bank will go, sure, let's do it, right? And if you think I'm making this up, okay, look at what happened to Sierra Leone in Africa, okay, where a Canadian mining company together with a British mining company got together and hired a mercenary organization, which was the umbrella was the British mining company. They were like down the hall from them, the same building. And they took $5 million, right? And gave the money to this mercenary company to go to Sierra Leone and overthrow the government and put their own puppet leaders in power. Okay. And the puppet leaders in power, the first thing they did was sign away the mineral rights to these two corporations. One of them was in Vancouver, Canada, and the other one was in the UK, London. Okay. Fact. This happened in the early 1950s. Sierra Leone went through a civil war that hundreds of thousands of people died. Millions of people were injured. Millions of refugees were created, right? Fact. Who did that? The banking institutions did that, right? All wars are bankers' wars. War is a Racket by General Smedley Butler, a must read. I will refill my pipe and be right back <laughs> nice plutonic friend can be greater than lovers it could be yeah ah i say f the paper money hold on to your gold and then their fractional reserve banking policies yeah insane i have to go and give my dog his medicine goodbye goodbye taco hopefully you post a picture interesting i never knew about uh, Sierra Leone. Thank you for opening my mind. My, my pleasure, Hannah. And this was, by the way, this was back in the early 1990s. It was a show on in Canada called W5. I don't know if it's still around or not. It was investigative reporting where they did extensive reporting on a topic and they shared that information. You don't really see that anymore in Canada, in Canadian mainstream TV, right? Because it's corporatized now. Back then, I, and I've so hard to find that report that I saw, okay? So hard. And I came across it and I knew about it because I was a geophysicist, right? And it would involve, uh, you know, finding gold and stuff like this. I was interested to see what, what it entailed. They don't even have to show uh, concrete assets any longer. No, <laughs> it's common now to borrow directly against assets they're trying to exploit. They call it a leverage buyout, yeah. Nah, it's crazy. It's it's like the banks are partners in waging war. All wars are bankers' wars, right? Why do so many marriages end in divorces? Uh, <laughs> let me here digital. Ready for this? 
I'm going to ask you a question. What's the number one cause of divorce? And I would argue it's the only, only reason why people get divorced. Okay. I'll, I'll give you the answer if you, if you reply or we'll give a couple of minutes. Would you recommend investing in silver gold? How does one do that? Recommend. Um, I know people that buy straight out gold. Okay. And then they take gold and then they put it in a chain, right? And they wear the chains or whatnot. That's one of the main ways that people do that in India. That's their holdings. That's their assets, right? So that's one way to do it. Uh, I don't recommend buying paper. Uh, certificates that say you own this much gold because you don't it's just fake uh, you have many soulmates but only one twin flame oh that's a nice thing what are some good low tax investments i can sit on for for a collapse and sell high um, one of the best ways to do have tax breaks is in Canada United States is designed for that okay is to form a partnership sole proprietorship a corporation whatever it is and take a part of your life where you like doing it and spending your time doing that and writing off using that institution as a tax write-off right and hopefully if you're doing it well if you're not doing it well you're learning something it's education if you're doing it well then that thing, its value will increase. Just make sure you're not overextended. Any advice for people who are just starting out in investing and saving for retirement? I've been thinking of uh, going into index funds once I start working. I can't come up with just one. You can't come up with just one. I can come up with one regarding marriage. Okay. Um, uh, Ali, I have a playlist on personal finance. YouTube okay if you go Chicho personal finance or if you go to my YouTube channel and look at the playlist I got a playlist of personal finance videos that I don't know there's a few hours of material there start I've organized it with the intro first for now anyway because uh, right now I'm not creating anything uh, I will be soon once I start creating more content on a playlist I flip the order where it's the most recent up top and some playlists are active constantly right but right now it's just introduction first so read that or watch that and then i sort of build on that so um, that's a good place to start if you if you're looking to start thinking about what it is that uh, investing is yeah here we have people holding on to so much gold there's also gold funds if you don't mind that paper trail and trust banking institutions yeah do just save save and buy coins when you can I guess gold coins Canada for example Ali just regarding gold coins Canada has been liquidating its gold assets in coin form over the last few years right so they've been selling gold coins to people who want to buy them that's one way Canada has been liquidating its gold assets okay and they've been getting more return than selling it in one big chunk on the open market i believe okay so that is one way matty's hi again chicho what's the difference between being in love and falling in love um, falling in love might just be short term being in love i believe for me anyway is about an extended period of love once you've gone past the initial I'm in love with this and then you realize no I'm really in love with this right falling in love is a verb being in love is an adjective or something I don't know what the English phrase is for those words oh you have thank you my pleasure Ali YouTube Chicho awesome thank you Jane gentle chaos came I always forget about those yeah I found it 12 videos okay thanks cool a lot of people get married too quickly that's one I'm from India I don't know about Canada Falling in love. Falling is an action verb. Cool. Uh, regarding the number one reason people get divorced is because they get married. 
okay? Getting married in the Western world is basically a contractual agreement. You're forming a corporation, okay? And if you get married through the state or through a religious institution, what you're doing is introducing secondary parties between the relationship of two human beings, two or more human beings that want to have an intimate relationship. How much of an intimate relationship can you have when you have secondary parties, okay, blessing you in your intimate relationship? Uh, so before talking about divorce, one must have, one has to understand what marriage is, okay? Now, if we don't want to use the word marriage, because marriage has so much weight associated to it, and if you want to say you're in a relationship with someone that is meant to be for a long period of time, and it falls apart, there are a number of reasons why that happens. Two of the main ones are financial and health related. Okay? So, that's my take. Greetings, blessings. Dr. P, how are you doing? We have been programmed to believe that physical attraction is the basis for relationships. Yeah, which is what a ridiculous concept. That's why people marry for the for the tax break yeah but I always tell people you can get you can set up your life financially uh, better regarding getting a tax break or just as well as getting married forming another corporation because what you could do instead of forming a corporation by marrying someone you could just straight up form a corporation right so that's your tax breaks the only reason I would I would say marriage is to a certain degree justified is if you plan on having children and that gives better protection to your children if you're married legally that way the state has less control over your children okay my bro is moving to Canada on 2nd of April I hope I can move once I get a job and some experience then boom life peacefully in the snow <laughs> hopefully if that's the way you want it uh, but once you get a divorce you lose 50 percent of your stuff yeah if not more because the lawyers are going to take a huge chunk if you get lawyers involved man right lawyers love marriages and love divorces our economic system loves marriages and divorces because it kicks up the gdp Health, wealth, and wisdom. Health, wealth, and wisdom. The problem with prenups index is uh, a lot of prenups haven't held held up in court. All right, I would say just form a corporation. Really. Why you should never get into a relationship. Don't pull Jeff Bezos. <laughs> and don't pull a Jeff Bezos goes beyond relationships, right? The other good reason, if your partner is a citizen in a country you hope to live, work in, yeah, for sure. I, I forgot about that one, right? And that happens huge. People want citizenship somewhere and they get married to someone in that country with that citizenship and then over time they get their citizenship marriage I bet you 50% of my stuff that I will never fall out of love with you I bet you that's the definition of marriage I bet you 50% of my stuff that I will never fall out of love with you that was too funny gentle chaos gaming love it so do all divorce lawyers never get married? No, they also fall into the programming as well, right? I've known divorce lawyers who are they're on their second marriage. <laughs> oh, interesting. Didn't know that. Yeah, prenups don't hold up most of the time. Yeah, prenups are. This <laughs> is like. It's like jumping off an Eiffel Tower, hoping that a 
fishing net is gonna save you. <laughs> not gonna work. <laughs> and if it does, you're gonna lose an arm or leg anyway, so it's over. Well, more likely marriage. I bet you jail time that you will never find my offshore accounts. <laughs> this stream couldn't have a have come at a better time. Awesome. Wife. Our new neighbor always kisses his wife when he leaves for work. Why don't you do that, husband? How can I? I don't even know. <laughs> I love the jokes. I don't even know her. I'm too funny. I love these innocent jokes, right? I laugh through the punchline of that. Our new neighbor, so wife, our new neighbor or husband, right? So spouse, let's say spouse. Spouse, our new neighbor always kisses his wife when he leaves for work. Why don't you do that? Partner. How can I? I don't even know her. <laughs> Top five, are you doing? Man, I made the mistake of watching the Pride Massacre footage this morning. No peace of mind for me today. Yeah, I, I, I listened to it as well. All right? I listened to it as well. Crazy. What's your favorite brand of gin? I want to start drinking. But I haven't found a brand I like. Uh, you know what? I don't have a favorite brand of gin. I like. There's some gin that are locally made here, that um, uh, like in BC that I've tried that are good. Uh, I actually don't mind Bom Bombay, uh, the one with the light blue. I like the flowery taste of it, but I don't drink it very much. I don't. It's seldom. Uh, I used to drink that a little bit. But for me, I'm more vodka. I like the, uh, I like the vodka. But I do. Friends bring gin, and I do. Well, if I drink gin, I just stick with gin, right? I don't drink, I don't mix gin and vodka. So if I start a night with gin, if I'm having, you know, sharing a drink or two, uh, I don't go past that gin, right? Chicho, do you believe future generations are less likely to engage in marriage? Um, I believe so depending where you are as well right um, I think we'll go through phases you know it's cyclic but I think the trend the overall trend is down uh, unless the government starts to like for example just just on the point of marriage right this is how much centralized governments love marriage Many years ago, they passed a law saying that if you live with someone on an intimate level, then married, you agree to marry or not, within six months, they consider you to be, uh, what's it called? Uh, to be equivalent to being married, right? They call it, oh my goodness, I had it on my tip of my tongue before explaining it, but uh, common law, your common law, right? So within six months of living with someone on an intimate level, they consider you to be common law, which is basically marriage in their eyes, because they want you to be married, okay? One of the reasons the excuses they give is to protect the partners and stuff like this, but they don't care about that. The main reason is because it's a tax benefit to them, right? GDP growth. I think Zcash is a, a better bet than an offshore account cryptos truthfully though i'm glad my my generation is being more cautious about marriage and having children later in life it's great that people are planning and taking control of their lives i agree index 100 percent. i'll find a local brand of gin yeah local is the best way to go there should be some in my area anyway Anna, there's some amazing i believe you're in seattle aren't you or no you're um there's another hannah's from seattle okay uh but in what what I've seen happen in Canada anyway in the last 15 years or so there's distilleries local distilleries like the organic and they're using like sugars from this area and stuff and it's they're nice drink spirits being made jink in the airport right now I can tune in for a bit there's Wi-Fi here so 
What's up, Chicho? What's up, Chad? Hello, Jake. How are you doing? How's life? We're talking about relationships. We've got some serious discussions. So that, uh, so that, I've heard that in some, whoop, in some parts of the world, a man doesn't know his wife until he marries her father, son. That's true everywhere. <laughs> okay, Ali, that's funny. But that goes for mothers as well, right? You don't know. You don't know. Uh, there are a certain percent, but I think there is a certain percent that uh, you know the person. Right? They may change over time, but at that moment when you make the decision to be with them, many people do know each other. Alcohol for me is meditational and medicinal. Yeah. Love and gratitude, love and gratitude. Common law, common law. Thanks, Index. Dad, I'm thinking of getting into organized crime. Dad, public or private sector? I love that joke. Gentle chaos. Can we all read that one? Uh, Dad, I'm thinking of getting into organized crime. Or sorry, sorry. Son is talking to dad. Dad, I'm thinking about getting into organized crime. Dad replies, public or private sector? Haha, <laughs> Matthew's laughing. Yeah, I'm Seattle. Same Hannah. Oh, same Hannah. Okay, awesome. That's my last name, by the way. Oh, your last name's Hannah. I always thought it was your first name. Damn. I'm never getting married. Hell no. If I'm feeling alone, I just get a housemate. Why is gold more expensive than water? Uh, when water is essential for life and gold is not. Good question. Neo alchemists. Okay. Rarity is one. Our current economic system has doesn't really have a way to put a value on long-term uh, resources, okay? And it doesn't have a way to incorporate into its value the environmental cost of extracting that value, okay? One of the reasons you can think about as gold being expensive is because of its rarity. Another reason is it uses a lot of resources, other resources, including water. Another reason is it pollutes water. Okay. Expensive is a state of mind. Yeah. Need is a state of mind as well, or want is a state of mind, right? Some people mix up the words. I need this. They really want I want this. You really need fresh water, healthy food, love in your life, whatever that love form takes. Nothing's too expensive, you just can't afford it. Relationships. There's such a stigma to be in a relationship, especially at my age, but I'm taking my time. Things will come when they do. Uh, yeah. Like, Jink, I can, I, I, uh, I can tell you, excluding this relationship I'm in right now, right? Most of my life, I have spent uh, not being in intimate relationships, right? Long-term intimate relationships. Because when you're alone, when you're solo, you can explore your own consciousness more. Right, then for my experience anyway, I could be wrong for other people, right? This is all personal. Uh, then when you're joined with someone else, okay. A gold water question just blew my mind. Nice. Because water is an, a an alienable. The more someone needs something, the lower its value goes. We passively breathe oxygen every day, yet still pollute the air. Yeah, pollute the earth. Because until the mid 20th century, gold was the internationally respected standard store of wealth. Bingo. Do you believe that the Spanish flu and many other uh, pre human bacteria diseases are frozen in the melting Arctic ice? Uh, there probably is some of that. But I don't believe uh, the Spanish flu, uh, from what I've read, I read this a long time ago, I don't think the Spanish flu was uh, 
pre-human bacteria, right? There's been uh, certain work done to track back the Spanish flu to uh, vaccines, inaugural immunizations that were given to U.S. soldiers in the United States before they flew off to Spain. Uh, I haven't looked at this for a long time, over 15 years or so. So I could be wrong on that, but some of the pandemics, uh, some of these diseases that have come about are because of human beings introducing them to our societies. They weren't bacteria that were around pre-human. Wasn't there traces of dogs carrying the bubonic plague recently? I don't know, but I believe the bubonic plague was brought about uh, through rats, wasn't it? And the reason it was spreading in Europe is because people were living with their uh, animals, with their livestock, and uh, it was spreading that way, if I'm not mistaken. The more followers or uh, an in influencer has, the higher his or her value becomes. What's your take on this? Um, no, depending on the system that they're on, maybe on Twitter, right? Their Twitter value goes up. The more followers an influencer has, the higher his, her value becomes. What's your take on that? It, it depends on what platforms, right? Like, I don't know. You could take any politician, any mainstream media news source or something and say they have a huge influence, what do you call it? Uh, value, right? To the people watching that platform or reading that stuff or involved in that system, maybe. To me, maybe not. Maybe they don't have worth value at all, right? I'll use one example, like, just take any of the mainstream propagandists on mainstream corporate TV, take the highest ones, right? Some people will say, oh, the, I wouldn't, I would rather associate with A squirrel <laughs> than them, right? So a squirrel would have more worth to me than some of the people that have millions of followers, right? It all depends what you gave worth to, value to. I have a friend now, friend now ex friend, let's call him Kevin, since he, year eight, grade seven, and it, and I'm currently in final year of school, uni next year. In September, a new girl joined the school. Let's call her Jane. So we got Kevin and Jane, and instantly we became friends. And over time, we became very close. And I fell for her after a couple of months. However, I realized that it wasn't to be. Kevin and her were hitting things off. Their first get together was at my house, ironically. So they started to date. And this hurt me for obvious reasons. Ah, no kidding Jacob sorry for a long message but I need to get it off my chest yeah no worries Jacob uh, I'm sorry to hear that but uh, it's part of high school it's part of growing up I've been in love with people that some of my friends have been in love with right it doesn't happen anymore I've grown out of that I'm wiser now, right? I am, we are co-creators. Mindfulness focuses power. Nice. Oh my God, dude, I mean like an oily John John stuck demo. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, I shouldn't have read that. Uh, that's definitely true to those who blindly follow. That's why it's dangerous to not read or see the full picture. Yeah. If you've decided to oops, that's a bad picture. If you decided not to be friends with Kevin because you feel he stole your girl, I would advise letting it be and not being spiteful or petty about the matter. She may come back around to you or you may find someone else. Yeah. And I think top five are they 
he be, they started parting ways with he started parting ways with Kevin before the girl they hooked up right so it was someone that he already decided to let Kevin go but then Kevin found his way through the girl that he had fallen for uh, maybe that relationship is uh, is for some reason finding its way back into your life right I think your point about scarcity is true and your point on value is the answer we value the wrong things we value gold over water while the latter is essential to life like just to give you an example um, it's a different example but it's the same thing like people value diamonds right for me diamonds are worthless like really like a thousand dollar ten thousand dollar diamond is worth like fifty dollars like it, it's garbage the amount of damage is done to the environment is a lot more than fifty dollars but its scarcity is non-existent like diamonds are not scarce okay so that's a fictitious value that people are put on there and once they become wiser to it they're like oh what a fool i was right so you have to be careful too as uh, to what you consider to be scarce not uh, at all he cheated so horribly on her and lied to all of our faces i can't be friends with him anymore good you shouldn't be none of us are good you shouldn't be okay and maybe that is a lesson she needed to learn right and some people need to learn those lessons i've known a lot of people man i've known a lot of people that they they were amazing and they were as they as for partners they found some of the most disgusting people that i knew to put trust and love and faith in right so uh, people make mistakes uh, don't hold them to their mistakes right if they make the same mistake again maybe remind them but don't write them off because of mistakes so the girl uh, maybe deserves a second chance right someone who cheats not so much if they weren't honest about it what would our world be like if a disease wiped out 40 percent of the world's population i would have done the same even if i hadn't had feelings she doesn't deserve it no no one deserves it chicho another question for you how can someone feel something they have never felt before uh, because before is a time thing right uh, we like we're not born with all these emotions that we have right there are feelings that I have now that I didn't have when I was in my teens or 20s there are feelings that I had in my teens and 20s that I don't have now right so we're constantly changing constantly evolving and a lot of emotions develop through that evolution so even if you don't feel something now you might feel it later this is off topic but this weekend Sunday is feel clean up day in our local little league I encourage everyone to go ah oh, that's right you did the, the grading of the uh, the fields uh, for baseball and I forgot about that uh, back to so I encourage everyone to go to go give back to organizations you love that will um, provide true happiness time to get on the track there again and get the fields looking amazing yeah I agreed with you on a hundred percent give back to community and that's one way to build relationships and trust and after three years all my other friends now realize it too so in one way it's a relief but it's come about in such a shitty shit way yeah it's the way it is right uh, we sometimes we see things that others don't sometimes others others see things that we don't so it's just the nature of the games I would also advise not referring to her as your girl ah good point index she's her own person it takes a while for young men to realize that but it's an important part of maturing oh excellent point index excellent point yeah diamonds are useful for cutting things that's it 
and optics. My apologies, and optics as well, right? Two ways. Maybe come on a couple of other things as well, but they're not scarce. <laughs> Two ways, success and failure. How do you handle family members who always make uh, conversation situations about them? Example, person A invited me to dinner. Person B taking, uh, talking with me said, why, why wasn't I invited? Thoughts. Um, Person A invited me to dinner. Person B talking with me said, why wasn't I invited? Thoughts. Person B. Person B talking with me said, why I wasn't invited? Thoughts. I don't understand the question, Hannah. How do you handle family members who always make conversation situations about them? Listen for a while, and if, if it's too much, just say, listen, man, uh, dude, we've gone over this. You're looping. You're lost in a loop. Uh, maybe you need some time by yourself to figure things out instead of l looping it past me again because I've already given you my advice, right? So if it's a situation the person's already brought up, just tell them what you said before, right? I said that before. I have people of that in my life, so I don't engage in long conversations with them if they persist on just looping the same thoughts, right? They're stuck. I'm not helping them, so we don't go there. And if they continue to bring it up, I reduce the amount of interactions I have with them. Okay. I never liked the idea of labeling someone as your girl. It's a little demoralizing. Good point. Sounds cliche, but I agree. Thank you for the for the human you are. Awesome. Talking to Hannah. Awesome. I oh, guess maybe from the madness something beautiful will grow in a brave new world with just a handful of men we'll start we'll start all over again all over all over again yeah is that from planet of the apes <laughs> yes oh, fun. oh wow we're almost at two hours what's going on Oh, wow, we're almost at two hours again. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Wow. So that was from Planet of the Apes? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Love that franchise. And, uh, hey, Chicho, just got here. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on David Foster Wallace. I just got infinite jest starting this weekend. No, I don't. I don't know. Um, he's the writer, I believe, isn't he? I'm bad with names, man. So the, the name rings a bell. I think he's the writer of uh, Infinite Jest is a ride index says. Hey, what is you are drinking? This is... Uh, crab apple i'm gonna hold this so it doesn't fall on the keyboard crab apple liqueur that i made about five six years ago <coughs> and these are the crab apples we started with four and this is the last one i'm gonna pop this right. it's delicious my workday has flown by thanks to these streams. I would love it if we can keep doing these streams mid-morning and midday Pacific time. Okay. And that's what I've been doing a lot uh, lately, Anna, anyway. And for sure, we will be doing these times a lot. But I will try to change up the time and do some at night time or in the middle of the night. I just haven't got around to it yet. Yes, I watched end of the hour on Netflix about David Foster Wallace's uh, final book tour. He committed suicide in 2008. Oh, wow. Worth watching. Index is asking. Yeah. Okay, so it's called, uh, I watched end of the tour. That's the David Foster Wallace documentary. You can eat crab apples? Yeah. Yeah. 
I make, uh, I got a whole playlist on my channel. <laughs> Here, I'll do the YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. Boom. Yeah, it works. So if you go to my YouTube channel, I got a playlist on um, how to make crab apple butter, crab apple jam. So we made it like a few years ago, three or four years ago or something like that. So that you can eat crab apples that way. And I didn't show how to make crab apple liqueur, but I have a, if you go to the foods playlist, there's a, I show video, I got a couple of videos on how to make liqueur. The first one shows you this crab apple liqueur what it is so I make crab apple liqueur and every now and then if I say crab apple tree in peak season sometimes I take one and eat it. it's really like dry but it gives a nice tang when you make liqueur are you worried about alcohol content during the fermentation process and the booze level getting too high not really I don't drink too much of it like because it is high sugar content and you don't want to drink too much you know what we drank and that had three cubes of ice in there right so what we drank is enough for today and I don't do that every day either right I do I've been doing it on my streams because I'm enjoying it I got to go through the liqueur cabinet again I got to consolidate the um, blackberry liqueurs and make some pineapple liqueur but I've just been sampling I'm just in the mood Um, when do you know to drink it when it's ready it depends the different liqueurs age at different rates the strawberry one uh, started getting the flavors really quickly within a week to two weeks it was good the pomegranates was within a month the crab apple took longer so basically when I make it I usually don't sample it until like two weeks then so I'd sample it within two weeks if it tastes good I can drink it if not I let it sit there again and then sample it a month later and then once it tastes good, it just gets better and better from there on, right? It ages well. Controversial question. Feel free to avoid. Can men and women coexist in the workplace? Yep. I myself, I'm not sure of any definite answer since it has only been happening for roughly 30 years and uh, things have been uh, diminishing rapidly. Um, I don't think so. I think it's been happening longer depends what type of workplace we're talking about like uh, in the healthcare industry men and women have been working together for a very long time if you want to just categorize nursing and doctors right or doctors and nurses nurses and nurses doctors and doctors we've had men and female um, uh, uh, female and male in both roles right uh, Chicho what's a relationship goal you have Ooh, what's a relationship goal you have um, one of the relationship goals, uh, one of the things I try to do uh, when I'm in a relationship is to make life easier for the other person. And I hope they are doing the same for me. If they're not doing the same for me, I know the relationship is not uh, con mutual and it will not grow. So one of the primary goals of me being in a relationship is to support the other person in their up and downs, right? So that's one thing. What do you mean by diminishing our relationship goals? Is 22 old to start university? No, you're never too old, old to start university. Uh, no, not by a long shot. A couple of moments, but make sure you're picking a subject that you're passionate about that requires a university education and the amount of time and money you will be investing in it, right? Or is it a hobby that you want to you want to expand your knowledge on? If it is, if you can afford it, sure, go to university. If it's putting you into debt to go to university to expand on your hobby, then acquire books on your by yourself and knowledge by yourself and just learn by yourself. A couple of moments in the movie caught my interest, which is why I explored DFW more and ordered the book. David how come you don't have a television because then I would watch it all the time yeah awesome that's one thing I, I did as well it was one of the f hardest things I had to do uh, is when I cut the cord back in early 2000 uh, like almost 20 years ago or 18 years ago or something I cut the cord right no cable 
I haven't paid for cable. I've been in houses where cable has been available, but I stopped watching corporate mainstream news. It was hard. You got the itch. But then, after a while, you're like, no, man, don't need it. It's an addiction. It's never too late. It's never too late. Grandpa, how do I deposit cash in ATM? Read the instructions. Uh, I seem to... Uh, I s it seems a social construct between men and women, at least in America, in the last few years has been not so good with allegations of sexual harassment. Sure, there's a lot of people exploiting it as well like that. Okay, just to give you an example, right now in Canada, United States, there are more females in university, higher education, than there are males, right? Thoughts on gender is a, is it a spectrum or is it biological? <sighs> Tough topic, right? I don't know the biology of it. I didn't study biology, right? But everything is a spectrum, right? Love is a spectrum, right? Everything can be put on a number line, right? On a scale system. Why not gender, right? Some people would consider certain males to be have huge male tendency. They'd be dominant, right? And others less so dominant or more less aggressive, more aggressive or more, you know, I don't want to use the word manly, but more man's man and this, that, that. Everything is a scale. There is no such thing as black and white, right? Damn, Grandpa, why so quiet? Just chilling, brother, just chilling. When you get my age, you need to chill a lot. <laughs> what females learn, trash degree, university like arts and humanities. Well, first of all, arts and humanities are not trash degrees, right? You can't just trash them just because our current political system, economic system, doesn't reward them as much as Wall Street bankers in terms of financially, right? But they are, they are silly if they are spending $200,000 to go get a degree, which is going to give them a salary of $20,000 a year. That is a foolish thing to do, okay? Mods on point, good job, thanks guys. Thank you, Top Fiber. I wasn't sure what was popping up, but thank you, Top Fiber. Oh, is that the old man, dude? <laughs> Gender is a combination of biological sex and gender expression. Gender expression carries more weight. Oh, cool. That's a good way of putting it. Humanity is trash because it doesn't have money in it. And it's just trash talking. I don't know about that. Spam 420. Spam 420. If you understand what 420 is, then you should be having more deeper thoughts than what you're posting here cannabis if you truly understand it requires deeper thought than a couple of things you posted okay Mafa, i pity you if education is just about money for you agreed i have a tough time with all the pronouns though i find it silly i haven't adjusted and i won't i don't think ever because it's constantly morphing and changing and being manipulated by certain institutions and systems i will be who i am and i will be sincere and honest and if anyone freaks out i'll explain to them i didn't mean them harm but uh, this is who i am and it is not because i am racist prejudice or whatever it might be i'm just not up to their recent recent programming Things that don't make money are trash. <laughs> Psychology is trash as well. No, no one wants to be paid. Uh, you should change your name, Spam420. You don't deserve to carry the name 420. I know that I will never have a girlfriend because I am trash. Yeah, you don't deserve, you don't understand 420. You're one of those people who's hijacking a system. Psychology is pretty crucial. I think this guy's trolling. For sure he's trolling, Dante. I agree with you. All things are listed. Art is humanities. Psychology is very important. Teacher plans. 
so that we don't think the 420 is a meme and it's sound more uh, when I got that number well you you by not understanding what 420 is have shown by the way that you're a very very weak troll very weak if you take on a name own that name understand what that name means that is part of growing up right that is part of wisdom that is part of experiencing life right if you took on a name <laughs> gave yourself the extension of 420 because it sounds cool then you're dingling <laughs> yeah he has a pretty troll name but i can hang out until he misbehaves for sure top fiber i'm okay with it too can't say i've never uh, did a 420 non-scoop in my life i feel trans people should choose male or female pronouns otherwise it's too confusing i don't know i'm sorry if that's offensive towards some uh, we like to give Chicho Spammers a chance, a very small <laughs> chance. <laughs> I support medicinal and recreational marijuana. That's awesome. <laughs> it's okay. I think the first step in solving the social construct and gender is expressing our opinions and trying to understand others. Agreed, agreed, agreed. I won't let them def defy you. Some kind of monstrosity. <laughs> A fun gang. So listen, that's a couple hours. Should we call it a stream? I might go for a walk. I think I need to go for a walk. What was the name of the book you were reading earlier? There you go. Light reading. <laughs> that's the next mistake. Wilhelm Reich, The Mass Psychology of Fascism. Okay. A top five or comic, comic book wise, I've shot the video for readings of um, uh, two romance comics I need to edit them but I need to get caught up having the upstreams uploaded to BitChute so um, once I get caught up with the upstream being uploaded to BitChute I'm going to get into editing them so most likely the comic book readings will be up mid next week maybe a little earlier okay and then uh, uh, I might do some more readings from set number four I might get into ASMR math there's some stuff I need to do for ASMR math or want to do for ASMR math that I promised to do a while ago. Uh, but there's going to be three comic book readings coming up. Two of them I shot, one of them I need to shoot still. Okay, probably within the next 10 days we'll have them up. <coughs> Skin in the Game. Oh, that's the other one. The other one is this one, and I highly recommend this one as well. Skin in the Game. Okay. This book is is good as well why hasn't gender issues been solved years ago why not because it's a lot of it is political Ooh, oops. How about that? spend time with that book it'll mess you up for real <laughs> <laughs> index is mentioning <laughs> spend time with this book it'll mess you up for real okay I've, I've only read the preface but i look forward to it and by the way index have you read this existential crisis material most certainly nice index have you read mass psychology of fascism great stream my pleasure uh, gentle chaos gaming thanks as always chicho is the best love you bro love you too man thank you a lot of it yeah i have cool awesome I want to join that club that has read this. There isn't too many people. I've never met anyone who's read that front to back. Same with this one, right? Where is it? Oh, same with this one. One day I'll read this front to back. Glacier Fox. Um, really? By Hofstetter. One day I'll read this from front to back. I only know two people who've read this. Three people, I think, that have read this. One day, I joined the club. Gang, thank you for being here. Uh, I'll maybe until we all see you next.
Thanks, Chris. My pleasure. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the mods. Uh, thank you for taking care of business. Thank you for the follows. Thank you for the subs, Julian, that came up. Hey, Chicho, is there any way of finding out where um, or how to get the painting posted in the background uh, of one of your comic video halls? The Smoking Rasta. Oh, the, oh, the Smoking Rasta. That's an original painting uh, that my mom did. There's only one copy of it. I'll ask her next time if she's okay with it. I'll photocopy it uh, and take that image. And I think I have the photocopy of it. I preserved it. And maybe we'll put t-shirts together once I get some funding or whatnot. That's my mom's drawing. I think you're talking about the black and white one that she did. I keep forgetting to ask. No worries. Hey. Thank you for the stream. My pleasure. Girls like the <laughs> Hey as So do a lot of guys. So do a lot of guys. Awesome answer index. Oh wow. That's awesome. Awesome. Okay. Thanks for asking by the way. I'll let her know. I'll let her know. And she did that drawing when she was like fifteen years old, fourteen years old, sixteen years old, something like this, when she was a teenager. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, gang, um, I haven't set up any other streams, but I will probably next couple of days. Next streams will be coming next week once I get caught up a little bit. Okay, you could have it digitally scanned and sell it as prints. Yeah, yeah, maybe we do. Maybe we do. Okay, I'll make sure the funds go to the family and bring us some support here, maybe. Okay, our first product. <laughs> My mom is drawing. And of course, send the printout to everyone that's supporting us through Patreon and direct donations and all that jazz. I'm going to Germany someday. Awesome. I hope you have a great trip. Okay. Good Friday, everyone. Good Friday. Talk later.